from Monday to Friday and I'm taking with me my husband Tony, Captain Birdseye and my two daughters, our two daughters and their two fiancés. Because this is really Jan's 60th birthday present, it's nothing to do with me. Do you have to tell everyone? Oh, sorry. Happy birthday dear. So today we've moored up at uh, Fradley. We'll see you tomorrow. Bit of a drizzly day today, so it may not be a lot of filming. Um, it's going to be a fair bit of rain, I think. So we're just going from Fradley, just going down about a mile or so, and then turning round. Obviously, we've got a 70 foot boat to turn. Um, see how well that goes, and then we'll be heading back. So it looks like we're going to have to uh, use the winding hole just past this lock uh, and then turn around and go back. This is um, Alriwus. I think that's how you pronounce it. I know David from Cruising the Cut has had problems. It's actually written Alriwus, Was, whatever. Anyway, we're turning around here and going back. <laughs> See you later. Has Sean had a Weetabix today? On, you're right. As we headed back towards Fradley and on to Great Haywood, we couldn't help noticing the construction of a brand new marina at the side of Common Lock. This new 60 berth marina is planned as three connected pools and has groups of individual moorings in small bays in a quite attractive layout, which includes visitor moorings and the usual range of marina facilities and a service building. During the planning stage there was some debate about whether this will actually add to the already congested part of the Trent of Mersey that leads from Fradley Junction. However it's obvious that with more boats on the network there will be more new marinas needed to service people's requirements. And this one according to the planning specification does make the case for its environmental credentials including the principle of making it look more like a natural body of water rather than a boat park.
Our two daughters, Sean and Molly, have been with us on many boating holidays, both when we've been hiring and also when we own the park share in Sapphire. So it was great to have us all back together again, reliving our old memories and making some new ones, of course. But we wanted to get their thoughts on our plans and how they felt about being back on a boat after so many years. Weird. The last time I was on one of these boats, I think I was half my height. But it was good. It's nice. Peaceful. <laughs> and what do you think to the fact that we're going to buy one and live on one? I'm quite jealous, actually. I can see why you would want to live on one. There's a good sense of like community and stuff, isn't there? So, yeah. <laughs> I can only see this side. I don't know what. I okay. can't see the other sides. <laughs> We're sharing it. I've got a boat in the middle. <clears throat> we got loads of room this side. Oh, oh, oh! What's it like being back on the canal? It's actually really nice. When was the last time you were on? 10 years ago, 2010. 2010? Yeah. Like that is a long time. Very long time. And do you remember all those times when you were younger? Yes. More when I was like an older child than a younger one. Yeah. But yeah. And what, what is it you particularly like about being on the canal? It's a whole different world. It's just as soon as you come on a canal and you experience the water you just feel like you're in a completely different world and you just instantly relax i don't know what it is but it's just you feel at one with nature oh that's very nice <laughs> now when we go out cruising we take it as a cruise so we don't go fast but then again we don't go really slow as you probably know the maximum speed limit you can go on the canal is four miles an hour. Very often, it's unlikely you'll ever actually do four miles an hour. You'll be going slow past obstacles, other moored craft, when you're approaching a lock, when you're approaching a bridge, when you're approaching a blind bend. Overtaking, particularly on a narrow canal, is a very dangerous manoeuvre. Both the slower boat and the overtaking boat have to work in tandem together. For quite a while the boat behind us was getting closer and closer and eventually the guy on the boat came to the bow of his boat to speak to us at the stern of our boat to say that they couldn't get their boat to go any slower and presumably wanted to overtake. We explained that we'd only do this on a straight piece of canal and where it was safe to do so. So once he had overtaken, and we assume he was either trying to get back to his moorings or to a higher base, what he obviously didn't do was read the map, otherwise he would have known that in front of him was not only a blind bend, but a blind bend leading to a bridge. And in circumstances like that, it's almost guaranteed that you'll meet another boat coming the other way. And this particular speeding boater not only got one boat coming the other way, he got two and also a boat moored on the left hand side. Had he have not been going so fast, he may not have grounded his boat. As you can see, we were happy to hold our boat in the middle of the canal. It's easier for him to manoeuvre his smaller boat than it is for us to try and manoeuvre a 70 foot boat and get round. Although to be honest, we could have just carried on. But we did wait in case he needed any help. I 
think the word here is karma. Another day, another hat. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, doesn't he look like Grandad out of Only Fools and Horses? During the war. Yeah, well, normally I get called either Father Christmas or the usual one is Captain Birdseye. But there you go. Anyway, it's a nice, lovely morning today and um, we've just got a little cruise back towards the base at Great Haywood and then we're gonna have to say goodbye to the boat. Now, what was it we're saying earlier about speeding boaters? Watch out for hidden speed cameras. Whoever's chair this is, they certainly need to sit down after that long walk from the house. As we approached the next lock, we couldn't help noticing there was a queue of boats in front of us. Uh, so this is what usually happens when you get to locks. Um, sometimes you have to wait because there's a queue of boats and with it being a single lock, you can only have one boat going down and then hopefully another boat comes in and comes up. 
Um, there's two butts in front of us at the moment, so we've just had to stop here and wait um, for the two butts in front to go down the lock. That's great because then it means you can have a little bit of lunch, you can get a cup of tea or a drink and just chill and relax because you're in no rush to go anywhere. Over in the distance you can see Shugborough Hall. The Shugborough estate was owned by the bishops of Lichfield until the dissolution of the monasteries at around 1540 and thereafter passed through several hands until it was purchased in 1624 by William Anson. In 1693 William's grandson, also called William, demolished the existing manor house and constructed a three-storey building which still forms the central part of the hall. It was at that time the old village of Shugborough was bought up and demolished by the Anson family so they could enjoy more privacy and space in their park. Family fortunes fluctuated greatly for the Ansons, the Earl of Litchfield's family, and crippling death duties in the 1960s brought about the transfer of the estate to the National Trust. The Trust has leased the property to Staffordshire County Council, who now manage the whole estate. The house has been restored at great expense, and there are some magnificent rooms and many treasures inside. We went past our turn at Great Haywood, discovered a little bit further down the Trenton Mersey before we turned round and come back. There's a nice little 90 degree turn onto the Staffordshire and Worcester Canal, which would take us back to our base, but as we still had an extra night to go, we thought we'd make the trip to Tixall Wide to see if there was any moorings.
Tixel Wide is a large expanse of water. The lake was probably created during the construction of the canal in 1771. The story goes that the owner of Tixel Hall, which was owned by Thomas Clifford at the time, had the grounds designed on the advice of the landscape architect Lancelot Capability Brown. It said Clifford gave permission for the canal to pass through his land on the condition it was made wide enough to look like a lake from the house, and this in order not to spoil the view. It's a popular spot, so going down here we're crossing our fingers and toes to make sure there's somewhere for us to moor up. So there we have it, a little trip on the Trent and Mersey Canal, uh, ended up here at Tixall Wide, lovely isn't it? Oh here? it's beautiful. Beautiful place. If you ever get the chance, um, come and spend a night down here in a boat, obviously. But you can tent probably. No. No, okay. No. <laughs> come and spend some time here, it's lovely, uh, especially in this weather, even though it's October um, and the nights are drawing in, when you get weather like this with the sun, um, it makes this a very special looking place. Yeah, exactly. I can hardly see with that beautiful sun. Yeah, it was a bit uh, hairy when we came under the uh, Great Haywood Bridge. Uh, I had to get my sunglasses on and slow down a little bit. No, but you did it perfectly. Thank you very much. Yeah, very yeah. Kind of you. So, we hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up for a like. Don't forget to subscribe, put some comments. Uh, we also like to know where you're from as well. We know we've got a few overseas viewers so oh, no, welcome nice. to all of them yeah very interesting so yeah. don't forget a like comment subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon Ding! thank you that is becoming a regular feature <laughs> here mrs l and you'll get notified the next time we upload a vlog so in the meantime all we need to say is happy cruising and bye for now bye, bye. and Bradley holds a piece what? What Friendly hold. Friendly hold. No, so we mm -hmm. start that again. Outtake. Ah, well, there's good times on the canal this week. <laughs> um, Start that again. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Oh dear, Jan's got the giggles. <laughs>